Ciao, everyone. Buona domenica. I hope you're having a great day, no matter what day you're watching. I'm Esther. I'm Alfred. Of you, me, and Sicily. And welcome back to our channel, or welcome to this channel if you're new around here. We're two expats living in Achi Catena, right? You've been coming back and forth from Sicily for about 25 years, and I've been doing it since 2014. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about buying a property, life in Sicily. What else are we going to talk about? What Whatever do you guys like want to about. talk about? That's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> All right. First and foremost, we had such a nice visit at my Italian teacher's um, place, right? Oh, it was we're, wonderful. Great people. Great really. people. In San Giovanni La Punta, not too far away. About she 15 was minutes. a teacher. And then we were correct that no, not a teacher. She was a principal at a classic school in downtown Catania where she taught Latin, Greek, uh, what other subjects? I think she said philosophy as well. Fantastic lady and her daughter Elisabetta is going to Milano to work at Cisco Systems. Imagine that. Yeah, uh, we, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, garden. Uh, we showed uh, our private members a little shot of the garden. Uh, Esther took a quick video. Man alive. Yeah, and we'll I would show move you a little there bit in a more. Cocaine heartbeat. That's yeah. how quick I would move. Beautiful. There. All right, so let's talk a little bit about buying a property. And Wait a minute, can I leasing. say one thing to Jimmy first? No, not Please, yet. Please, Jimmy. <laughs> No. Jimmy, before you start, <laughs> on a lighter note, okay? Hmm? Today is the feast day of Joan, Joan of Arc. Yeah. Did you know that? She, she was burned at the stake, Jimmy. Is that what you're saying to me? You know, she had a choice <laughs> between getting burned at the stake or having her head cut off, and she chose getting burned at the stake. Now, you're supposed to say, do you know why, Alfred? Why, Alfred? Why, Alfred? Because a hot steak is better than a cold chop. Funny. <laughs> All right, let's get to the meat of the topic uh, that we're talking about. So uh, buying or leasing and life in Sicily. So first things first, location, 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 right? Alfred, how did you choose this location? That's not first things first. It isn't? No, that's like, we have, that's like well, number first 12. Is, that's well, like number wait 12. Wait a second. First is deciding whether you want to do this, right? And whether you want to lease or rent or buying. First, you have to have an idea of where. That would be number one. All right. Well, according I'll to you, I'm just giving her a hard time right now. She's such. All a, right. I love putting her on the spot. <laughs> right. All right. Can I? Can I answer my question? What, what's the question now? Um, how did you choose? You how did you choose this location? I chose this location because my two previous houses were just a mile away, and this area is the area that I really knew, loved, enjoyed, and why the heck should I move out of it? Uh, frankly. So it was a great place. This place came up with the opportunity to get this place and I jumped at it and that was, I'm on my ninth year here right now, this place. The other, the other two places I had were big, beautiful villas, but they were too big. They had big gardens and so forth. And I had to pay the giardiniere to come in every week to cut the grass and it was a pain in the ass and everything else. But I and think, I think that is up. number one. Yeah. Really number one, Esther, is not where you get to live, Okay, but what do you want in a place that you're going to live? What What are your needs? Okay, mm -hmm. do you want a condominium? Do you want an apartment? Do you want a villa? Do you want to live by a lot of people? Do you not want to be living by a lot of people? Do you want to live on the beach? Do you not want to live on the beach? Do you want to live in the hinterlands? Whatever it is, your personality is, is what we're going to do. Now, let me give you a quick example well, of our friend before, Anthony. Hold well, wait, it, our before, friend Anthony. Okay. Our friend Anthony, a uh, retired Marine vet, uh, handsome guy, nice guy, he uh, decided he wanted to come here, and he's now a gentleman farmer. He bought himself a kind of like a dilapidated and run-down farm. a lot of work. Farm, but the guy loves it. Mm -hmm. Anthony Campanella, he's my hero. He bought himself a house in Avila, a small little place in Avila, and he commutes <laughs> every day to his farm that he picked up pretty cheaply. But he had brought it back to life. That's what he wanted to do. Right. So even even if you had not picked this uh, location, I would pick it for several reasons. First of all, I like it that it's walking distance to the beach. We've got the mountain over here, uh, Mount Etna over here, walking distance from markets, right? So it, whether you're going to have a car, that's going to be a big uh, decisive matter, right? We can walk a mile, less than a mile mm -hmm. circumference and 
have two or three shops uh, that you can go shopping in. For me, also, the location of having a city close enough, uh, but not too close, was very important. For me, near, being near the airport was also very important because we, you know, we regularly go back uh, to the States. And just the business that we're in, right, uh, tourism, we need to be near the airport. So for me, this location is perfect. And it's, you know, it's, there's rural, but it's close enough to the city and close enough to art, you know, Catania, cultural, there's stuff. All cultural stuff, all those things were important to me. You know, where, sir, I, as I said, it's, you cut once after you measure nine times. Okay. I've said that 10 million thousand times. You have to plan a move to a a foreign country. Basically, it's a foreign country. And, and to, to go back and start, you have to do an assessment, number one, of your finances. That's number one. Can you afford to buy a place? Because the chances of you getting a mortgage in Italy are slim to none, and slim just left town, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to get a mortgage over here. So if you, if you want to do a cash deal, uh, that's a lot different. So you have to, and then, that's number one, then number two, the condition of the house. Does it have to be rehabbed? And then number three, finally, you're living here. Are you on a pension? Do you have investment income? Do you have savings? What what is what it whatever it is, first you have to do a comprehensive uh, overview of what your situation is. And I really think that you may be not the right person to make that ultimate decision. I think you have to have some qualified help and what they call a disinterested third person to take a look at your finances and to see if can you really do it. That's good advice. I mean, really, that's that's yeah. number one. And that's even I, before you just do anything else. Address the one euro houses and the renovations because those are all out there. The one thing that's really important to understand here in Italy and Sicily is that first of all, there's a rule for rule. There's different laws. Each community, each town has different rules. Each region. So, for instance, we we're just talking about this uh, in Tuscany. You can only use three or four colors for the house because it can interfere with the cultural um, it's, uh, Rome treasure. To, Rome Rome to. To. Most of the cities. Yeah. You I mean, there's the spe very specific. You can't nail <laughs> a nail into the wall without asking or getting. The other well, thing that's, is. That's, 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 that's a metaphor. That obviously. was a metaphor. Uh, but the other thing is that you also have to understand who's doing the renovation. That person also has to be licensed. They also have to go through the communion. So the biggest thing is you have to have someone with you, a local lawyer or someone like that, that helps you through the process, right? Well, that's down the road, Esther. Again, you, you know, you're shooting your load here. Kind of <laughs> I mean, listen, it's my load to shoot. If I want to shoot it, I'm going to shoot listen, it. Okay. After you make an assessment, okay, of, okay, I think I can afford to do this. Okay. Then the next question becomes, okay, where do I want to go? Okay. Right. We just so I had that. some. I had I had a guy. I was talking to a guy earlier, and I say, "Where, where do you want to go?" And he says, "Well, you know, what you know, what do you suggest?" I'm not going to suggest to you where you should go. That should be part of your research. You ought to find out where you want to live. Do you want to live in Sicily? Do you want to live in Tuscany? <coughs> Excuse me. Do you want to live in Calabria? Where do you want to live? Okay. You can't just come to Italy and buy a house. Okay. And yeah. that's a that's a, a lot of problems right there. Now, you know, Facebook has this thing called Facebook Marketplace. Did you know that? Yeah, of course. I, I go on it all the time. You could try to get on to the marketplaces of different cities and towns and villages in Sicily. They have their own marketplace. And one of the categories that they have is houses for rent and houses for sale. Okay. These are all FISBOs, as they call it. You know what FISBO is? No. For sale by owner. Okay. You eliminate the third, the, the middleman. Okay. I think you got to start there to get a lay of the land in whatever community you're going to pick and look at some houses first. That's step number one. Okay. We've had step number one for like five times. Okay. This is, that, that's really step number <laughs> well, one. Well, what right? if I mean, someone to wants to go, like, like, let's say a lot of people want to move here to Italy and Sicily to their ancestral home. So the number one thing, here we go with number one again. So I would say come here first 
and check out the area. Stay for at least one, two, three months, right? Just to get a lay of the land to see if in fact your ancestral home or wherever you picked is someplace that you may want to buy. Different strokes for different folks, Esther. We all have different needs in life. Sometimes some families want to move here with kids, mm -hmm. okay? Like I'll give you a good example, right? People next door just moved in. They have three kids, three little kids, okay? There's no, there's no yard for them to play in. I mean, yeah. that's a consideration. For me, I would look around, okay, the play yard for the kids. Am I going to have animals? Is there enough room for them to run around in? What about the schools? And how do you do that online? You can't do it online. Yeah. So what you have to do before you sign anything, you need to come here. You need to invest the 2000 or $3,000 it's going to cost with the airline ticket. and the, It's and an whatever. investment. It's an and investment. Yes, it's certainly. You're in a foreign country, okay? So let's assume for the purposes of this conversation that you've done your research, you've done your due diligence, and you have enough money, okay? And your retirement income or whatever it is that you're going to – now you can proceed to – Number two. Okay. So what's number two. Okay, number what three. Is, whatever, what is number whatever. two now? Um, all right. Keep going. Okay. So now you have your choices. Okay. How are you going to buy this place? Number one, you could buy it by a FISBO, for sale by owner, direct. If you buy it direct, it's fraught with danger because usually the seller's an idiot and he's trying to hide all the bad things of the house. And typically it is bad things. That's one way you could do it. Number two, you could try to get a realtor, okay? Uh, but the realtors here are not like the realtors in the United yeah. States of America. They don't have they don't have a lot of stuff that they have. Usually they have their own little private Idaho, so to speak, in each town. And these guys, uh, for every good story I've heard, I've heard three bad stories, okay? Yeah. And then you could try to do it online with some of these 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 people online, but who in their right mind would buy? No, I wouldn't buy a house I agree with online you. from some guy that lives in the UK and has a cousin in, you know, where? Palamo, okay, who sends him pictures, okay, and he's making himself a fast 10%. Why would you waste your money? Yeah. But let's agreed. assume that you've, you've found somebody reputable, okay? Mm -hmm. And now you've found the place that you think you like, okay? Okay, now you got to come here and you got to check out the house. And guess what? You checked out the house and it's okay. Okay, now what do you do? Now you get an attorney. At that point in time, you want to get somebody, you want to get someone to be your mouthpiece because, and you want to get a Sicilian or an Italian person to be your mouthpiece and step aside. Okay, because there's a lot of things that that person has to do. It's a far different process than in the yeah, United States. Yeah, and I'll explain States. some of the, the costs in a bit. The, well, first, the first thing that he's going to do mm -hmm. is he's going to get himself in the town uh, where the property is located. He's going to get himself a geometra. That's like a building inspector, okay, as a commercial guy that you pay money to. Typically, it could be between three and 700 euro, depending on the problems that exist in the, in the place, okay? And he's going to go to the town hall. He's going to make sure that the house is on the proper lot of land, okay? He's going to make sure that no additions were made illegally because you have no idea how many, how much illegal construction there is yeah. uh, in this country, okay? Where people operate under the skies. They put, Without licenses. They, put, they run wire that's wrong, They they not to code at all. So you have to make sure that whatever house that you have is to code and has a uh, what they call a certificate of habitability. In other words, it's a house and you can rent it. That's step one. And then the second <laughs> professional that you have to hire is a land, a guy that's going to go to the registry of land to make sure that back taxes are paid, to make sure that um, there's no lawsuits against this person with outstanding judgments. So you want the house to be in marketable condition. And that's what a guy like I do with my partner, Massimo. See, we take over. Once you find the place, that's what we take over. And we say, 
get out of the way. Nicely we say that, but you know, get out of the way and yeah. let the pros. Uh, let's let's take a little bit of break. We're going to take some questions from you and talk a little bit more about that. But first, let's okay, just we'll say hello. Yes, then right. we'll continue on. Thank you, Jim Ingram, for becoming James. a member. Uh, right. If you guys don't know what a member is, uh, there's a join button and you become part of the community. Uh, Jim Ingram, yes, Joan of Arc, Bona Domenica, Helen. Joe and Sue Asioni are here from Hi, New Joe. Jersey. Hi, Joe. Uh, Chow Jane from cold and rainy upstate New York. Our friend Manny is here. Hi, Bonita Manny. Manica, remembering those who gave ultimate sacrifice. On that note, Alfred, nothing like the good old. That's why I have this Navy hat on today. Okay. I never forget the heroes who have died keeping me and my family and you and your family free. And tomorrow or Memorial Day is the time to contemplate all the heroes who have died we in thank all you. the wars, okay? Exactly. And who are serving, we thank you, because without them. Now, today what I'm drinking in tribute. What are you drinking? To the military veterans of the Second World War is what they drank during the Second World War, VAT-69, okay? This is what the European... Most of the European soldiers drink it. It's a fine whiskey yeah. from Scotland. If you watch Band of Brothers on uh, CNN uh, and what do you call it, HBO years ago, that's what they uh, drank. They were in those days drinking whiskey was very fa uh, very you know commonplace. The, the most common drink in those days was what they call a highball ester. It's a whiskey. So and we water, thank right? everyone uh, and so today, respect to God them. God rest your souls. Thank you very much for your to service. All, to all the men and women. Men, women, Army, Navy, Marine Corps. Bravo to them. Huh? Coast Guard, Air Corps, the uh, uh, Secret Service folks, okay? Men, women, everybody, thank you. My family thanks you. God bless you. And I'm going to have a little toast. Perfect. Today. Ching, ching. Uh, Cook Love Good Deal stuff. with Rachel Zerzow. Good morning from Austin. Grateful for this community. We are grateful that you guys are here. Trust me. Uh, Joe um, Marinelli. Ciao, Joe and Michelle from Piscat Away. I got it right. <laughs> we can't it. wait to return <laughs> it. You have to kind of say I like, got like, it. And we've got Sean Lewis here. You don't here. really, really piss a cat away, but I understand what you're saying. Here. I got it right. I got it right, Pat. Really. Hi, Pat. Good hate, Al. He's just uh, good. No. Good hate, Al. What does no, that mean? Go good hat, them. Al. Oh, go. Good, good go hat. Navy. This oh, was I given to me by my friends from Singanella. That's why I'm wearing it today. They are heroes. The people in Singanella, mm -hmm. they guide not only Southern Europe, they guide North Africa, Africa, Africa and the Middle Mediterranean. East, and the yep. Mediterranean. Those men and women in the Navy, I tip my hat to, for sure. For sure. It's an important day. It is an important Stefania day. Stefania is here. Ciao. Thank you. Tim DePietro became a member. Great. Love it. Great tribute, Al. Okay. Wait a um, Did I say one Al, thing? Al, great information. You really have to make sure there's not family six generations past that have an old claim. Jimmy, there's a lot more than that, too. There's such things called squatters. That's a big issue, squatters, okay? And here's usually what happens. Here's the story. Your great grandmother or your grandmother owned property, and then she left it to a cousin to keep an eye on while she moved to the United States of America 75 years ago. Okay, that's where the problem happens because all of a sudden he rents it out, or maybe he doesn't rent it out, but a squatter comes on it and has been there. It's like what they call uh, in the United States, they have the same thing adverse possession, it's called. Okay, they have very similar. Uh, thing over here where a squatter, if he's there for a prescribed period of time, can make a court action to claim the property as his own. Okay, that's why you have to do a comprehensive title examination by a competent person, ab initio, right, you know, right at the beginning. If you try to get somebody kicked out of a house, it's be very costly. Okay, if there's if there's a squatter there, you're looking at a five thousand to ten thousand yeah. euro. Uh, expenditure just to give the guy a boot and especially in this COVID situation it's really tough and most of the time you're waiting okay I mean it's, it's, it's a long it's a long way uh, Jerry Genovese <laughs> is me. here good morning Tom Catoni is here Hi, Tom. Uh, Roberta Bonadomenica 
Uh, yes, she did say, I love the hat. Um, well, thank you. Mary Crow is here. I saw Janine D'Onofrio. Oh, and it's Atlantis Vivian. Graphic and Web Design Ireland. This will be interesting confirmation. Let me know if you guys have any questions. We'd love to uh, hear if you have any questions about buying gear. I remember when the exchange rate was two to one years ago, huh. and it really benefited us to take U.S. dollars over there, but properties are much more affordable now. Well, here's the thing about that. Now, before I continue on with my little story over here, uh, because I like to do it chronologically, mm -hmm. you know, you know, preparation, as I said, is the key to success. Okay, a lawyer doesn't ask a question in a court of law until he knows, unless he knows the answer to the question. All right, and we're pretty much the same way. Massimo has and I have worked for 20 years together. We've come across, them. you name it, we've come across it. Mm -hmm. Okay, hard and easy. Okay, but um, you, if you prepare it. And you have your head on straight, and you don't have what I call the Stengal syndrome. The Stengal syndrome is a psychological syndrome where somebody has come to Italy on a holiday and is so enamored with mm. Italy that they just want to pack their bag and move back here without any regard to the pitfalls and problems that exist moving to a foreign country. Mm -hmm. right? It's terrible. Uh, it really is. So in any case, if you get yourself an attorney, what he does is he'll start right from the beginning and he'll get the professionals. Now, do you need to have a lawyer? That's a very interesting question. The answer is no, do it yourself. Okay. Uh, a he, notario, a notary will close the deal. That's a lawyer. and But that lawyer is not selected. I mean, that lawyer should be selected by the buyer. Okay. But what happens is, most people from America, they don't know any notaries. They take the advice of the realtor who selects a notary from the town that the deal's going to happen, and perhaps they've done deals before, and perhaps they finagle the bagel. Guess what? They do. And your interests are not protected by the notary, okay, period. So what you ought to do is you ought to hire yourself a lawyer. And the lawyer gets going by negotiating the sales price and coming up with what they call a pre-contract okay that's not the purchase agreement that's the pre-contract okay and typically a good lawyer and i consider us to be pretty good lawyers we kind of bury our fee or most of our fee in the negotiated price okay and what is the negotiated price that depends okay it's not gonna you're not gonna get out of it for less than four or five thousand dollars period end of sentence for our fee it's not gonna happen plus the cost why because we're good lawyers okay let me let we, me take nothing some questions happens out. to our do okay let me let me just see <coughs> that there's some a lot of questions coming in so okay. hold it for a second um the Helen wants to know if the inspectors come to the house yes absolutely they 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 go into the if they have to, that's what you, we pay money for and those those guys can cost as I said between four and eight hundred euro depending on what the problem is okay and they're pretty good okay and like in Kentucky like in Sicily we have a good a good relationship with lots of notaries and lots of uh, geometers because we've worked with them before a lot of these guys we trust their business but we've done we've done work uh, is up in northern Italy where we supervise home constructions okay and we worked with uh, building inspectors up there okay and upon their advice we'll retain people so for example say we need new walls built okay we're not going to get joe schmo off the street we're going to get somebody that's at the recommendation of the building inspector who is a professional or a plumber or an electrician okay you know you're not going to get some idiot to run cable wire on the outside of, of a house. And they have okay? to have some type of a license, right? They can't just be someone you're The you're just... should have, they have a license. Like in the United States, they should be bonded and have insurance. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? And those are the things that we do. We, we kick every tire. We turn everything over, okay? And then finally you come and you have a pre-contract. When, you know, you pay $3,000 deposit. And then there's a gap area between the day of the pre-contract is getting signed and the actual closing itself, where you would not believe how many pieces of paper have to be filled out <laughs> correctly. For That's the like notary, everything here. For the notary, everything okay? here. Now, if you're in the United States, the problem is you're in the United States and the property is here. So, you know, what do you do? 
Well, typically what we do is we have you give to us a power of attorney to close the deal. It's called a limited power of attorney for the particular real estate transaction. And we do the power of attorney and we actually do the power of attorney in conjunction with the notary to make sure it's okay with him. Okay. And then afterwards you sign it and then you send it to the secretary of state's office in the state that you're from to get what they call a certificate of apostille, which is an international seal. And then you send it back. So now we're authorized to, you know, to close the deal for you. Okay. We won't have you send the money until the very last minute. In other words, if the closing is on a Monday, we'll say, okay, send it Thursday and make sure we have the money, give a few days to come in and we'll talk about the money. Okay. Yet. So let, let me, there's still a lot of questions and I have a question for you. Is renting a place involved less than uh, the prep and buying? Renting a place is much less prep than buying, right? Well, so here's the thing about renting a place. <clears throat> And you need to watch out about renting a place too, because now there's all these B and Bs around. Mm. All right. You know the B and B places. Now this, they're really clamping down on B and Bs. Okay. See what happened when pe people in Sicily were renting out their rooms and nice places and so forth to make extra money, but they weren't paying any tax. They were doing it in the black. Okay. So a few years ago, the fiscal police they really started to crack down on. Um, uh, these B and Bs, and then now making them not only get registered uh, with them, but also they inspect them. Okay, now when you rent a place, okay, that's a different story. When you rent a place, you they have a requirement that your lease contract, <coughs> excuse me, also has to be registered. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because you're giving this guy money for that rent. They want to know about, and you it. have to pay for the registration. You have another to pay fee. for everything over you. <laughs> There's a <laughs> fee on top of every fee. Trust me. Um, listen, um, we have people here, even from Dubai. Dubai. Uh, Pat really wants to know if it's easier if you, the buyer has yes, cash. Yeah, cash is king. Cash is king, and we can save a ton of dough. So we can save you a ton of dough by informing the client that it's a cash deal. Okay. We squeeze everybody down the road, down the line. Which, you know, when you have money like that, it's mm -hmm. okay. And by the way, one thing I did forget: if you think you're going to come to Sicily and try to find a job, good point. You got you got screws loose in your head. I mean, unless you have a portable job to take, and then and if on. you have a portable job to take, you better be well versed in the tax implications, both in the United States of America, which I advise that you get an accountant in there for your pension and your profits and so mm -hmm. forth. And also here, okay? Because typically, if you make more than six or seven thousand euro on a calendar year, you're gonna have to pay tax in Italy. In Italy, yeah. And a portion of your United States money will, in fact, be taxable in Italy. Did you know that? Yeah. Not not your pension, okay? But if you have a four hundred one k that's making money, that profit may be subject to tax. Now, I'm not a tax accountant, okay? So what you want to do is you want to get a good guy in the states. And a good person here in Italy, and you take every legitimate yeah. deduction you possibly can, and then that's it. I mean, basically, that's that's how you want to do it. Ciao from Wheeling and our many links to our families in Chanchana. Love Chanchana. We did Chanchana an entire nice episode on there. What a fascinating uh, town that is, and air is so clear up there, and a very rich sulfur mining history in Chanchana too. I love that. You were just talking to somebody who had a place up my, there. My, my Italian teacher. Remember yeah, the, she was father, telling, the grandfather actually owned, owned the mine. a mine. Yeah, old, and old now mine. after this is fascinating. So he owned a mine, and now, uh, now that there's no more sulfur mining here in Sicily, it's just a piece of property that's sitting there, and it's useless. He can't do anything with it. He can't sell it. He can't do anything with it. With the sulfur mine? Yeah. Uh, thank you to all my fellow veterans. Grateful. So are we. I want to sure, know so where we, you huh? guys are watching from. Uh, ciao from rainy Brooklyn, going to Ragusa to see family ASAP. God bless our merit. You know, right? Ragusa is um, one of my favorite places. Yeah. Just slow down a little bit mm -hmm. so I can make a comment. Wait a sec. Let no, me finish. Speed! Slow down. All right. So in any case, let me just go back to um, Ragusa. Now I... Lost oh, wait, I, I died. Uh, Ragusa uh, uh, Ibla. Uh, Ragusa is, of course, there's two different parts, right? Ragusa Ibla is 
one of those places that no matter where you're from, if you're on this side of the neck of the woods, you got to go there and see Ebla. It's yeah. just a whoa. It's a and beautiful. historically, what a beautiful and town they have a that is. Beach too. And then the I was just going to say the beach. Yeah, um, that's know. also something for you guys to consider whether you want to be, you know, in some of these areas. It may be near your ancestral town, but when the tourist season starts again, you know, it's going to get busy. If you love Tarmina, if you like places like that, that those are places that are going to be slammed with people. Anthony um, has a question. Okay. Anthony says. I can answer that question. Uh, oops, 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 oops. Uh, let me see. Where is that? Right Fred McDeal right right is right here. Right there. there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for my family in Rakapula, Sicily. Okay. Let me answer that question. Okay. Okay. Do you have any info about them? Date of birth, et cetera, of the name, date of birth? baptismal certificate most people don't okay especially if they go way way back so what you want to do is you want to hire a genealogist there are professional genealogists uh, in Catania and Palermo that have been that are very good they'll charge you between three and five hundred euro and they'll do a nice workup for you mm -hmm. of you know who's alive who's not alive etc uh, if you hire a PI if you hire friends. a private investigator mm -hmm. they're slipshod They'll take your money and then you chase them. But if you go to a reputable place, and as I said, there's, there's several. There's also one in Jati that's very good, too. And there's also a couple of genealogical groups on Facebook that well, are Well, wait a sec. Good. Also email me because we have some people that we know. That do that? That do that, Okay, yes. so email us. Um, what's Mama here. Cooking for Us is here. In, um, Atlantis Graphic and Web Design Ireland says, wish I knew uh, had this service. I've just employed someone to help me in my house. Um, before yeah. we go on, I just want to say a quick a shout out to CostelloRock.com. Uh, Dusty and Michael uh, Costello have been great, great, great uh, supporters. And so have a lot of you guys, but they just recently made a huge donation. So we really appreciate it. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like, because that helps us out too. You know, we have many people um, over here that have been donating to the Sicilian Project because, you know, the, the thing came up on Facebook, you know, would you like to have a fundraiser for the Sicilian Project for my birthday? And I said, sure. <clears throat> The first two days, I raised over 500 euro in two days. And I know Vivian has donated. Joe has donated. A lot of people on here. A lot of people here have donated. And we're going to start getting back into the classroom after the summer is over. Right now, we've been taking money in and we've been donating it to churches and to the homeless and this and that. Yeah. But, and I was telling this to Esther, our original mission is to educate kids in the languages. But the problem has been... There hasn't been any classes to but do. But we will it. start. We'll start it in the fall again. Joe so we'll Marinelli go. says from September 21, December 5, we're visiting hey, San Antonio, which is, excuse, next excuse me, next to us, Pietra Perzia. I love Pietra Perzia. Favara Caltamepi suggests a beautiful over there. Uh, this is just the start of a journey to find a place to potentially live. That is a great, great thing that you are saying, Joe, because you don't just want to go to one place. You want to really look at multiple places. Maybe it's not your ancestral <clears throat> home. Maybe you want to also take into consideration, do you want to go to the West Coast, the East Coast, uh, the Northern, the Southwestern portion? All of them are very different. I, make, I want to make sure that you guys know that coming here and experiencing it. And I was saying this to him before we came on the show. I said, Alfred, I've been all over Sicily in the past seven years. I've, you know, just be between the touring, between the ancestral home videos and so forth. And I would choose this area over and over and over again, over every other area. Again, because of the proximity to the city, but not too close proximity to the sea, walking distance, the, you know, pace of life is nice and slow. Um, so that's, that's a very good idea. Um, Archie Vivian, San Antonio, it, wait, it, before you move on, mm -hmm. Archie San Antonio on that list, I would, on the East coast is a really nice place. Okay. Yeah. Not only is the town small and quaint, but the extended town, like kind of like the outskirts of town around the town, there's some beautiful houses there too. Okay. Uh, it's not on the ocean though. Okay. It's on the way up going up to, uh, the next town up but there it's is seven Vietnam minutes and so, seven minute drive yeah but seven it's a minute great drive. great place and they have a wonderful marketo outdoor market that we go well, every yeah. monday it's great and the crispell is and there the fest that's die for san antonio is also san antonio, beautiful. Yeah. mountains in tier north south east west coast they're all very different 
Yes, they are, James. Uh, Rich says, hello from New Jersey. Always enjoying your informative and entertaining videos. So mm -hmm. you guys, oh, Travis is here. And I saw hey, Travis, Christine thank you again well. for your donation for the Sicilian Project, uh, Travis. Thank you very much. Kids appreciate it. Okay. Uh, I thought I read something about the rehab of Commiso into purchase properties. Any truth? Listen, <clears throat> if houses were one euro and they were any good and uh, the mafia found out about them, don't you think that they would lay out 110,000 euro to buy each house for a euro each to make them into drug houses or safe houses or something like that? Believe me when I tell you, if it's too good to be true, it is. There's nothing in any desirable town. If you want to go into East, you know what, for a little place that's half abandoned in some type of a shack, go ahead. But you're not going to buy a place for one euro and move in. Come on. You know, what were you born on a Tuesday? It's not going to happen. You'll have to spend money. Okay. Is that going to happen in the United States? You think in Boston you're going to find a house for a buck? On New York City, yeah. Well, you're not going to find a house like that for uh, for a dollar in Palermo or, or Catania or Stedacusa. They'll be in the hinterlands, in remote areas. Okay. It's a way for the uh, mayors. It was a uh, way for them to repopulate because a lot of these towns have, you know, the population is just going down, and it was a way for the mayors to repopulate Why and also they, make mm. excuse me, and also make a little bit of money. But like we mentioned earlier, there's just so much that has to go in there. Mike Costello is in the house. I don't know if you heard Mike Costello. I Hi, Mike. give a shout out to you and Dusty uh, and uh, CostelloRock.com, Landscape and Designs. Thank you so much for your support. I wish you support. the best of luck, man. Okay, I this really is a do. good point. Uh, travel is much slower in Sicily. Also, my ancestral town is uh, 35 kilometers from Catania, but takes over an hour. You're right. Yeah, this, so this is, this is a very good point. You know, things operate differently here. Things are much slower. There is traffic. It's not like Boston traffic, but if you go at certain times there, it will take a little bit longer. Plus, some of these roads are, you know, they're very narrow. They're very dangerous. You may be going up a hill, so it may take a little bit longer. And as we have experienced many times, Google Maps is not always your best friend. Yeah. So that's, you've that's got right, you've got to you've you're got right. to plan a lot of that. Um, uh, Anna says, "I love Tropic." Castellan Mare, the Gulf of San Vito, a cup, a very beautiful location. Anna Abrams, Castellan Mare del Golfo is one of my favorite places. Well, San as Vito, well. Cap is not, is not just, chicken liver either. That's a beautiful place. Well, that's place a beautiful too. destination for pay, the Couscous yeah. Festival, um, also for the best beaches. It's voted year it's nice after place. year a as the best yeah. beach. A little bit um, to get ciao, to. dear Esther and Alfred, after you become a resident in a community, that is when Italian taxes start from your income and you then can apply to your health card, yeah, correct? Let me, let me answer that. First of all, let me just get the whole business of citizenship out of the way, okay? And then I want to finish off by an Well, let's see that an entire... Well, Later it, it, on. This fits, it all fits together, though, E. Just give me a couple of minutes, okay? Okay. <clears throat> if you buy a place with a certain amount of money, okay, say 500,000 euros, for an example, you may qualify for a permanent visa. They have these golden visa things there now where if you're investing in a business or if you're buying a specific property for X amount, you're so, quote, unquote, citizenship stuff problem is solved okay the other thing is for you folks who are stumped about the citizenship thing right you know there are many other options with visas that you might be able to qualify a residency visa if you have the financial wherewithal to do it okay to get a resident card the th one of the, the first things you have to have is you have to have a fiscal code. And you can, get them, you can get them at your local consulate. That's the first thing you have to have, okay? You want to buy a house, you're going to have to have a fiscal code. You want to get an Italian citizenship, you have to have a fiscal code. No matter what, because that's a get tax a health code. Card, you have health to have card, a right. But the, the, I don't know if that answers her question. It says that is one of the Italian taxes from your income. Now, you're... Italian income or American income will not be taxed. 
well, to get that, that health de- card. That depend- okay. To get your health card, that comes after your resident card. Okay. So you find your house, you move into your house, you register the lease. Now you want to get your resident card. And in order to get a resident card, there's another punch list of stuff that you have to go through. You have to have a bank account, for example. With a certain amount of money. You have to have insurance. And if you don't have insurance, you have to go to the post bank and buy insurance. And buy the insurance, okay? So when you're going to the, the, the comune, you've got the documents that they need in order for you to get uh, the resident card. Once you get the resident card, then and only then can you get the a health card, okay? You, you don't get the health card first. You have to be a resident to get it. Now, if you're a Johnny come lately, they may require you or you're a member of the European Union, another EU state moving in, they may require you uh, to go out for the first few years, maybe four years or five years, and purchase independent insurance from the post bank at a cost of about, listen to this, 500 euro a year. 300 euro. 300 and euro a year. Renew, and what you Hello. have to do is you have to renew it every yeah, year. Yeah, every year. Yeah. So for 1,500 euro, you're covered for five years. Yeah. Five years, right? Come on. I was telling um, Mr. my Blue Cross policy in the States was, was costing ridiculous. me 1,200 bucks a month. How do you uh, calculate property taxes, and is it possible, difficult to get a mortgage? There is no property taxes, okay? There aren't any property taxes. If there was property taxes in Italy, there'd be blood flowing in the streets. What you're going to do is you're going to pay some taxes going in, ab initio. Typically, the buyer and the seller both pay 3%, but there aren't any property taxes. You've got other taxes to pay, however. You've got garbage pickup taxes. You've got... TV taxes, you've got water taxes, you've got other taxes, but not taxes, internet taxes, but not property taxes. Now you say, wow, that's great. Guess what? It's great, but the taxes are subsidized for all these things that allegedly you get for quote unquote free by having a tax rate of at least 40%. Plus on top of that, there's a VAT, a VAT of ad valorem tax or a value added tax. So that's why I said 25 minutes ago, your best friend is your accountant because there are a lot of things that you're going to have to pay out. But the beauty is some of that stuff is tax deductible in the United States, okay, or tax deductible here. So you need to get your professionals in line. Yeah. And also a good bank, okay? There's a lot of sh- crappy banks around here. They're small little mom and pop operations. They're awful. Okay. They charge absorbent fees to take money out. They have, you know, stick to a, a good bank. There's a big bank. There's a lot. I like, I would tell my Unicredit. clients, Unicredit, they're like the Bank of America or of Italy. Yeah. They're all over the place. And guess um, what? They're Anthony honest. Anthony Rapa, how would I look up my land my grandmother owned in Borghetto? She left in 1949 and never sold it. You probably have to get her name, date of birth, and have somebody research her stuff and see if there's anything on her paperwork or her husband's paperwork, baptismal record or something like that, that has an address. Or you could hire a genealogist. The only way you can do it. Don't try to put okay. Don't try to put an advertisement. That's not going to work. That's wasting money. Sean Lewis. Okay. After watching you guys talk about the topic, I have really lost my unrealistic opinion about buying. Trying to share this education to others. I'm wondering why you lost that. I mean, it is doable, Sean. Uh, that's the, like it's I not said, doable no, no, unless he, you're prepared. Wait a minute. Wait, Stop. He, I disagree wait, with but you. But wait a second. It's not excuse doable. me. Excuse me, Al. Hundreds of people have done it. You have done it. Anthony have done it. He he's just saying that he's lost. I'm I'm curious, Anthony. I mean, Sean, why you uh, lost your um, thing? But I mean, it, it it is doable, Alfred, because you Listen, help people do it. Wait a minute. And people have done it. Wait a minute. For every one person that does it successfully, ten go back to the states brokenhearted because they didn't prepare. Okay. Right. Preparation is the key to success. There you go. I've said that a million times. You okay? said it, but if people are if prepared, you come they'll here do it. Bright eyed and bushy tailed, okay, and expect that you're gonna get a job as a tech person or something else or a doctor or this or that. There are no 
jobs. I think you prepare people, And Albert. you're not going to be a priority hiring unless you have a, a, a talent that's so enormous that they need you here. Okay, right. We've got people out of work in Italy. Therefore, therefore, if you, however, if you plan. That's perfect. Okay. Set out. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim if you says, plan, you can do it. If you don't plan, you get a, you know, the highway of the broken heart. Jim says, thank way. you. I have an eye on property, but we'll need to get a mortgage. We'll probably try to go through an Italian bank here in New York City. All right. Dominus for Bisco. All right. So anyway, we've done a lot. So if you guys have any other uh Questions, drop us a note. Uh, well, wait a minute, I have to finish that, the story about well, We haven't talked sec. about don't, finishing it. Listen, there's finishing one it. important part that I think we should save for the next time what happens when you get there, when, uh, you know, doing that. How about furniture. if I finish selling the house finish, to heaven? Finish sake. selling Thank the house. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh okay, go ahead. God. Anyways, so after you do all the stuff that I described for the last 25 minutes, you have a closing to do, okay, which is very similar to the closing in the United States, okay? If you keep now, if you want to come here, you come here. Spend the two thousand or three thousand on a ticket, rent the hotel, right? Then, or you can give it to a power of attorney to Massimo, and he closes the deal, and then you get the keys. Congratulations, you get the keys. But guess what? That's where the fun starts. Now you want a property in Italy. What about all the post closing stuff? You have to sign a contract for the water. You have to sign a contract for the electrician. You have to sign a contract for every utility. Everything. You want internet. There's a million things that have to be done post clothing, uh, closing. Most of the houses are in you know vanilla condition. That means you just have the walls. Are the walls full of mold? Where are you going to get the furniture? Okay. You have to get the furniture. You have to get a kitchen. There's a main. It cost me ten thousand bucks to get my place, and I got junk stuff. Ten thousand bucks. Your first place. My first place. It made me go broke. I had no idea. I ended up buying used stuff, but you know, by the time you figure out a kitchen, bedrooms, you name it, you know, thousand here, five hundred there, four hundred here, three hundred there. The bottom line is renting is probably a better idea. Well, listen. If someone calls me up and say, you know, what do you advise? My advice has always been rent first. Travel around the island. See what you want, where you want to live. Then make a decision as to when you purchase after you've looked around. Yeah. If you come here and jump into the firing pan, what happens if, guess what? You don't like your house after a year. You're thinking to be able to put on the market and sell it like <laughs> in the United States? Forget it. It's going to be an albatross around your neck. So. Slow down. Like That's Mr. Minagi said, sun warm, grass green. Chill yeah, out. Viv, the place Let the is, pros handle it. Yeah, the Viv, the, it, it is paradise, but there's a lot that it goes into it. Uh, Kathy Latona yes, Viv, said, yeah, it is paradise. thank you for donating your time. And to you share should come here. You're the type of person that you come. Uh, for those of us hoping to move. To, and we're going to do many more, um, Kathy. What? Um, she said, thank you very much for donating our time. We love coming here for you guys on Sundays and Wednesdays to talk about things. You know, it gives us a chance also to uh, talk about some things that we love, also research some things that may we may not uh, know too much about. The whole thing about our lives is to entertain right, and educate you guys. So I'm glad you guys are. Um, think, okay, who now you should, who you should Roberta, thank is Wonder Woman over here, okay? Because uh, this Roberta, woman has given herself to this project like you can't believe, okay? <laughs> you know me, I'm gonna tell you today. this morning we talked about what we were gonna do, okay? Okay, what do you want to talk about? No, yesterday I said, well, let's talk about you know buying a house in Italy, okay? So she spent the rest of the day preparing, right? I sat down <laughs> in front of the, this where I'm sitting right now. At two minutes before we went on, from last night to yesterday, she's researching and preparing. So guess what? I tip my hat to Thanks Esther. 
No, no, well, I'm serious. Well, this is a topic also that I want to She does it for you myself. folks. She does it for you folks. But honestly, Crazy. it's a pleasure. And even when we talk about the <coughs> historical stuff, you know, that we've been talking about the <coughs> Muslims and the Saracens here in Sicily. We still have to talk about the Normans, the Greeks. But that gives me a chance also to learn a little bit of something that I may have not known. So you know there's this is? a go. Hmm? You know what this is, Bunny? Uh, what is it? It's a flask. Donna Muldoon gave it to me as a going away present. I put my, my alcohol in there. But if you look at it real closely, it's an American flag there. And the building on the, I guess, the right-hand that side, that's a Prudential. That's a Prudential building. It's my flask. I'm the only one in Sicily that has this flask. Well, <laughs> I'm too special. Um, no, Alfred, this is really something, a, a great topic, because you've been doing this now for over 20 years. You're well-educated, and your your advice is very valuable, and I know people out there are enjoying it I as painted well. with very broad strokes, by the way, yeah. because every single document has its own name. And I have to tell and you. And I'm not going to go. And I'm not going to go that. saying you need to do double, 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 for you and confusion. I'm just saying, generally speaking, get the big picture. Eyes wide open, Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't trust anybody. You know what I've, you know. You don't going, know these people. Going through my residency and getting <clears throat> my health card and all of this in, in this period really opened my eyes about just how much bureaucracy is in this country. Just opening up a bank account was a four-hour process. Two visits, four-hour process. It's crazy. One p paper after another. That, And this is just, you guys, to get my bank account open. How many times did you so say your so I and so I could put seven thousand euro. Every bank I went, I went to three banks and they turned me away. How, but how, so, how, hmm? much, how many times did you have to I have sign? I to sign my name like thirty times. Never in my life had I have to sign so many documents. <gasps> it was crazy. Um, now let's see. That's because of the leftover from the fascist era, the attention to detail. And before that, probably the German occupation, a little bit of the Spanish occupation, a little bit. But let me tell you something. The civil servants here, they break agates, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, they break agates, right? Uh, the web house horse is here. Right now, I turned on and lost a lot of what you said. Anyway, Sicilian native, I can, can watch start stating whether someone will wish to buy a house or property never before. Now time was appeared a better time at good prices. What kind of English is that? I don't He's even understand Sicilian, that. He's oh, okay. Alfred, uh, thank what's, you what's for your work. Saying? I didn't understand. I think he's saying that it's a good time to price. Alfred, thanks uh, for your work with the Sicilian project. My family is from <coughs> Comiso, and we hope to in the next few years to work with you in Sicily. Lori, right. I got to tell forward you, to it. I it was. I'm a board member of the Sicilian projects, and I've done a couple of classes in the area. And I have to tell <coughs> you, it is one of the most rewarding things because. The children here, they really want to learn English. You know, they have English in, in high school, in um, schools, but the numbers, the hours have been decreasing over the years. And so there's a need. The kids here, when we were speaking to them or playing games or singing songs, they love it. And the parents are so, so grateful. Stefania, if she's still here um, in the a chat, we, uh, her kids were in one of our camps. And it is really gratifying because what we're trying to do is really just plant the seed in the hearts and minds of Travis, the Sicilians. Yes. Excuse I, I, me. Tra wait a minute. Travis is saying an important no, thing to honey, me. Honey, no. <laughs> He's talking about honey. smuggling booze to me. Honey. I'm saying yes, Travis. <laughs> I have my priorities straight. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, what did he say? I love that guy, um, Travis. I should okay, smuggle. I should smuggle a bottle of my favorite bourbon. Yeah, you, you don't really have to should. smuggle. You're allowed okay. to bring two bottles. Can't wait in. to share more about the Sicilian project. Um, most of the English taught in British school. Not, that's true. That is very yes. true. Uh, but you know, the other thing, and then this period we've been donating to the churches and getting pictures from the different parishes where they take tons of food and donate it to the poor. And as you can imagine right now, there's a great amount of need. So it's been a pleasure doing that People as well. People are poor here. Yeah. The average family of four makes 1,500 euro a month, less than two grand a month to pay rent, food, clothing, everything. Stop and think about that. In the United States of America, where the average income is what? 60 grand, 70 grand? They're getting by on 18,000 bucks a year. Come on, are you kidding me? It's a joke, okay? So 
That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. If we can turn the life around of one person, one, not 100, one, we're okay. Just planting the seeds, right? That's it. Just planting the seeds. And Mike Costello says, my about. son is watching with us and excited to come to Sicily and help with the Sicilian project. Let's talk you about that. You can learn that. about the Sicilian project by knows. going to the website. Honey, he www. About that. Well, others don't. Okay. www.thesicilianproject.com. Uh, yeah. And by the way, if you want to learn about me, go to my website, www.alfredzappala.com and pick up a couple of my books. How about how about promoting Yumi in Sicily? Forget Did you that. forget about that. <laughs> you know, it's I mean, the I'm going to teach, teach you guys. I'm going to teach you guys. This, right? I'm going to teach you guys a word. Stronzo. Oh, don't say that. Stronzo. That's a bad Look word. it up. Stronzo. Stronzo. Uh, <laughs> uh, can you share the cost of utilities a month? All right. I, yes, I can. Do you want to do it? Did sure, you pay the bills? <laughs> okay, come Go on. Ahead, you want to pay honey. You want to pay? honey, you're the expert in this oh topic, not me. Your internet will cost you 45 bucks a month, and that's internet and phone. Okay, unlimited internet, $45. 38 euro a month, 45 bucks. Okay, how do you like them? The Apple's Comcast and Verizon. You get screwed in the States, okay? That's number one. Number two, my electric bill averages about $75 a month. And I run one air conditioner, not all the time, but, you know. We have and one. we, it's a, it's a uh, my uh, Caldayo, my water on demand heater is electrically run, okay? My gas bill is about the same, 70 bucks a month. And for the gas, we do our heat because we have forced uh, water in our radiators and uh, taking showers and stuff. And, and then what's, what else? We trash. Have? We have trash that costs 235 euro every four months. So now, what is that? Four into 235. It's about 50. And even though we don't have a TV, there's a TV. Oh, you have to pay a one-time annually but that's put into your electric bill, which is also about 70 bucks. They, they put an extra 10 bucks a month on your electric bill for what they call a television tax, even though we don't have a TV, uh, because a lot of the stations like Ray, those are state-owned stations. It's not like ABC, CBS, et cetera. Although the cable networks here are very good, and it also right, goes, yeah. yeah, no, the, the local access cable uh, is very good as well. And then you have a condo fee. Condos, by the way, is what you ought to think about, okay? If you're like my age or, you know, a veteran, so to speak, a condo. Yeah. Why go crazy in a house? A gated condo. A yeah. good condo. There's beautiful places. You can pick up a place that would be maybe $250,000, $300,000. Nice place. Two-bedroom, beautiful place, safe, clean. Come on. I mean, what, are you gonna, what else are you going to do? I mean, if you want a villa, you can buy a villa. There are beautiful villas here. But if you're looking to, you know, spend six months here, six months in the States or do it easy, something like that, yeah. do it easy, do it easy. You're right. Esther. It's truly, really, it's true, Esther. Here, the bureaucracy is really offered, but you know, sometimes you have to find the right way to switch it. And the other thing is, you know, I said this earlier as well, that one town may require a different thing. You know, they may have different procedures. So you have to be prepared. Getting a residency card, getting a health card is not the same in every community. Uh, do not apologize for your English. I'm glad that you're here and maybe listening to us talk Forget a little about bit. It. Do not apologize. Excuse me. Excuse me. Perfect. Excuse me. I'm talking to him. <laughs> because maybe we love you, you maybe you listening to us a little bit will help your English. We find a lot of people, and by the way, the web force, go to our channel because we have lots of uh, videos from all over Sicily, including foods and festivals. And sometimes people have told me, some Sicilians have told me that when they watch our videos and they see the picture and they hear me talking about it or hear Alfred talking about it, that it helps teach them a little bit. So Maria Q is here. Buona domenica. Okay, Rich, when my family spent time in Kanikati with our cousins a few years back, no one spoke any English. The English language schooling taught there were told very, very, it's a huge problem. It's a huge, huge problem for sure. Um, 
Do I get to uh, make any comment on these, or are you just going to blur it out one after another here? Um, you've had I mean, that poor guy over there, I mean, I wanted to make a comment four times ago, but Ooh, now the web horse? Yeah. Well, what do you have to say? I like you, and I want you to stay with us. We'll teach you English. Okay. Just listen to us. It'll help you. Mama Thank me, you very so much, Al Buddy Alfred Basta. This has been a sensational episode. Thank you oh, very brother. much. Well, it was all you, Bunny. It was all you. All right. On that <laughs> note. Oh, wait. I got to show you guys my lemons oh, and boy. oranges. I mean, lemons. No, not oranges. Just lemons. Picked it from Esther my teacher. Great lemons and great Look at this. melons. And too. this. <laughs> How's that? All right. On that note, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We thank you. Leave us a comment on what else you want to talk too, about. We'll see young. you on no, Wednesday uh, for another live episode. It's Festa de la Repubblica. So we'll talk all about that on Wednesday. Until then, final word. No. Arrivederci. <laughs> I love you Ciao. guys. God bless you. Ciao.